Hey everyone, I'm Brittany Duran from Punish Props. In this episode of Prop Shop, we're going to show you how we made Ichigo's hollow mask from the show Bleach. This hollow mask is the version that covers his whole head, and it's the inverted color version that's seen later in the series. We use lots of tools and techniques for this video, and all that information is linked in the description below. Let's get started! The hollow mask template was modeled in the 3D program Maya. This is a great way to get correct proportions and size. Any 3D modeling software can work for this method. The eye holes and jaw were adjusted to fit an average size human head. Teeth were added and the jaw hinge was tested. This model will be turned into a paper craft template. Supports were modeled in to keep the paper template aligned. After modeling, the mask got imported into Pepcora Designer. This program flattens the 3D model for printing on cardstock paper. When unwrapping a model in Pepecora Designer, think of where you want the seams. I like to separate the pieces into strips. The more planning you do now, the less cutting and gluing you'll do later. It's time for the fun part of gluing tons of pieces of paper together. Super glue is applied to the paper flap, then is held in place for a few seconds. This process is repeated a couple hundred times. We have an article with more details on the process of paper craft linked below. If you're using super glue, keep uncure super glue remover on hand. I may have glued myself to the paper a few times. The paper base is complete! Fiberglass resin was brushed onto the paper until it soaked through. The inside of the mask got backed with more resin and fiberglass cloth. Since the fiberglass wouldn't fit in the horns, I slushed in some Smoothcast 300 resin. The fiberglass cloth and sharp edges of the mask were removed with a rotary tool. Mask pieces got test fit along the way. All the surfaces were smoothed with sandpaper. Body filler was spread over the exterior. The low polygon flat areas got filled in to bring back the curved shape. The body filler used is Bondo, which works great for filling in large areas. For filling in small gaps, I should have used Evercoat, which is easier to sand and creates less air pockets. Instead, several layers of Bondo were applied between sanding. Primer was sprayed on during filling and sanding. After a few layers of primer, I switched colors. This helps highlight all the low spots that need filling. The horns didn't fit perfectly in the sockets, so I used the Bondo Squish method to fill in the gaps. Bondo was spread in the horn sockets. The horns were pressed into place and held until the paste started to set. When the body filler became tacky, the horn got removed, leaving a snug fit. Body filler generates a lot of dust, so wear your respirator and work near a running vacuum hose. Gaps in the teeth were carved with a needle file. The top edge of the horns got sanded flat to match the reference. Lines for the paint details were sketched on the mask. A trench was slowly carved with a file. Don't mess up! Everything got primed again and then wet sanded with a fine grit sandpaper. We could be almost done, but this helmet is a mixed media project of fiberglass, resin, and a lot of Bondo, which is pretty brittle. So we molded everything. That way it can be cast in a really sturdy plastic resin. The first mold we made is a matrix mold. For more information on matrix molds, check out Bill's District 9 video. A helmet stand was sculpted from non-sulfuric water-based clay. The whole helmet got covered in an even clay layer. Strips of clay were used for mold jacket registration. Aluminum tape marked the seams in the matrix mold jacket. 
Smooth-On's epoxy coat was brushed on the entire surface. Fiberglass mat got pressed into the tacky epoxy coat. Smooth-On's epoxamite was brushed onto the fiberglass. Ideally, you want the jacket to be fairly thick, but we ran out of material, so our edges are a little bit brittle. Prying apart the jacket was so much fun. The clay layer was peeled away and cleaned off the master. Holes were drilled in different levels of the jacket. The jacket got secured to the base, leaving a void around the master. Smooth-On's Mold Max 30 was poured into the spout. The silicone leaks out the bleeder holes, which helps evacuate air pockets. After the air escapes, the holes were blocked with clay. The next day, the clay was removed. You can see the empty space between the master and the jacket was filled with silicone. With much struggling and swearing, the jacket got pried off. A seam was cut in the back of the mold. The X-Acto knife blade has been bent into a zigzag shape, which creates registry grooves in the silicone. With the top half of the mask complete, it's time to mold the jaw. The jaw was a simpler one-part mold. Silicone was brushed on the surface with registry keys added. The final layers of silicone were thickened with 5X. Plasti paste was applied for the mold jacket. The jacket was brushed on in two pieces, so the castings can easily be removed. Each horn is a two-part mold made in the same way of the jaw. Half of the horn was covered in clay. Like the jaw mold, layers of the silicone were brushed onto the master. A plasti paste jacket was applied. Silicone will fuse with itself, so add mold release. This process was repeated for the other half. Ah, that great feeling when your silicone separates easily. We have our mold, so now we can cast copies. Smoothcast 300 was mixed with some black tint and poured into the mold. The resin got slushed around, coating the entire surface. This is also called rotocasting, which means a great workout. The next few layers were slushed in with Smoothcast 65D, which cures faster than 300. After curing, the cast got liberated from the mold. The horns and jaw were slush cast with the same method. The extra plastic was trimmed off with a rotary tool. The eye sockets were freed with a drum sanding bit. All the seams and sprues got cleaned up. All the pieces got coated in black primer and the head and jaw were sprayed with a white paint. Painter's tape masked off the stripe areas. Extra tape was carefully removed. All the pieces were sprayed with black paint. The masked areas were then peeled off. The mask is supposed to be weathered, so a mix of acrylic paints are applied. Light gray paint got dry brushed onto the edges. The edges now stand out against the dark paint. Holes were drilled so the horns can be removed for travel. Nuts got permanently attached to the horns and bolts will screw into them from the inside of the helmet. JV Weld was used to adhere the nut bolts to the horns. Having two bolts attached keeps the horns from wiggling. The gel was lightly held in place with T-nuts. T-nuts got JV Welded into the helmet. The junction stuck out a little too far, so that got grinded down and rounded over with epoxy sculpt. Acrylic shapes were cut and heat formed into the eye sockets. The adhesive side of aluminum tape helps add reflection. 
The backs of the lenses were covered with electrical tape so the wearer isn't blinded with light. What light, you ask? Well, we're making the eyes glow with lights. Because lights are awesome. When wearing the helmet, your eyes are close to the sockets, so you only need a small slit to see. It's like wearing an Iron Man mask. A battery and switch were wired into the helmet. Red LEDs were glued into the eye sockets before the lenses got permanently added. Aw yeah, glowy eyes are the best. Elastic straps were added to the jaw to help it move with the wearer's mouth and stay in a closed position when not worn. The jaw can be pulled away when putting the mask on and snapped back into place. Padding got added to the inside of the helmet and the jaw, so the jaw will stay snug to the wearer's chin. The mask got clear coated and is now ready to wear! The plastic resin worked great for this helmet. It's pretty light and has a little flexibility, so the horn tips aren't brittle. Don't worry, I can see out of the eye slits just fine. Thanks for following along with the Bleach Hollow Mask build. We've got tons of more projects lined up, so make sure to click subscribe. Also, check out our other videos to see Bill make crazy awesome things. Thank you all for your support, and we'll see you next time. I, just, I know, I've done. I am recording too. We have 20 more minutes. Sweet, that should be enough. Oops. All right, time to lift this heavy thing. Oh, it's so heavy. It's so, so heavy.